Boris Johnson is the first British Prime Minister ever to leave office in shame, personal shame and disgrace. He ha has lied to the British people, not just a few times, all the time. And so he leaves office not because of a policy setback, because his per personal misconduct, systemic, habitual, a culture of arrogance and abuse, privilege and entitlement. And it's perfectly true, it's perfectly true that I leave not at a time of my choosing. And it's uh, uh, absolutely true. I will be leaving soon with my head held high. What happens next to Mr Johnson? Well, he is still an MP, a Member of Parliament. That means that, in theory at least, he's got to represent his constituents, attend uh, Parliament, turn up and take part in, in votes. Uh, I predict that he won't do that. I predict that he, uh, he's an habitual rule breaker, he will ignore Parliament, uh, and he also has problems. Because of his record of misconduct and of habitual deceit and lying, he now faces, he's going to face a whole series of really difficult inquisitions into the way he governed our country. My prediction is that he will announce that he is standing down from Parliament. There are precedents for this, uh, that's what Tony Blair, he cut and run in the middle of his uh, uh, premiership, though he didn't leave in such conditions of personal disgrace. He did believe he had, he was the architect or, of the Iraq war, Mr. Blair, in which was actually, of course, in terms of the damage done, far worse than anything Johnson's done. But uh, he didn't abuse office in the shameful way that Johnson did, and Johnson's going to have to ask, answer questions, and I think he will prefer to scuttle. Whoever wins this election has only got two years to go. The Tory party is tearing itself to shreds. You're going to have uh, uh, Johnson outside Parliament emerging as rather a Trumpian figure, just as Donald Trump, after losing the presidential election uh, two years ago, sort of set himself up as a kind of force outside politics, um, but very menacing to those inside, uh, really talking very alt-right alt policies and attacking liberal democracy. I think you're going to have that with Johnson. He, he will use the various, um, he's, a, he's a very, very fluent writer, he's quite a good talker, he will be in demand. He has a, a collection of supporters and followers. And he, I, I assume that he will give a running commentary on whoever takes over from him. There's a contest underway and that must happen. And, you know, I would, wish, wouldn't want to damage anybody's chances by offering my support. I just have to, Not to get on. Not a of I, anger. I have to get on. And in the last few days and weeks, the, the job of... In and of itself, it is a good thing that Johnson, the most squalid, venal and amoral Prime Minister of British history, has gone. But the problem is, will we get anybody any better? Since, and the other point is, look, since nobody was able to address or even talk about the massive issues of Brexit, Ukraine, do we really want to sort of Head, head, head on to, to what might become World War Three. Um, uh, do you, the, the 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 very very strong economic headwinds, which can lead to a depression on the scale not seen since the 1930s. The, these are all massive issues which uh, haven't really been talked about or addressed, and it's not certain to me whether they're within the competence of either of the two new candidates we have for Tory. Prime Minister. They want to damage you in any form, but they really want to damage me so I can no longer go back to work for you. And I don't think that's going to happen. A very interesting question whether or not Boris Johnson and Donald Trump are a temporary aberration or whether they 
represents a new kind of politics. And I think that's the big challenge which lies ahead. Essentially, both Boris Johnson and Donald Trump have launched a head-on, deliberate attack on the institutions of liberal democracy in the West. They are trying to replace it with a, a form of oligarchy in each case, which governs on behalf of special interests and big money. In that sense, it's a really terrifying time. If you look back 50 years, the institutions of the West seem to be set and strong. Um, I'm talking here about domestic policies, uh, and it is now a dangerous time, particularly because the looming economic recession will cause fresh waves of problems which can produce fresh pressures on politics.